104.5 the team 104.5 the team.com on the phone right now a special guest all the answers to all the questions related to the nba he is shaker high school product sam perkins sam you watch the nba finals what was your reaction to seeing lebron win a championship for cleveland i mean it was it was it was good i mean it was like a lot of storylines and the way they won it the way they came back the way he, you know, they were talking about his legacy and talking about everything he's done wasn't good enough. And um, for, his, for him to turn it around from a deficit, I mean, it just showed, just shut up a whole lot of people. And, um, and then, too, you know, going back to Cleveland from years ago, from Miami, I mean, it just, everything just came full circle for him. So, it was a good, uh, a good storyline and a good uh, ending for him. And now I think critics would probably just be quiet. You've been able to watch LeBron. You spent nearly 20 years in the NBA yourself. You played with Michael Jordan in college at North Carolina. You played against Michael all throughout your times in the league. I don't want to ask you who's better, Michael or LeBron, but are they in the same conversation? Are we at that point where they're in the same conversation? Yeah, they are. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of a little tired that they compare. Every time a, a, a great comes along, they start to compare. But um, I really feel that yeah, he's in he's in that conversation because I mean, he's won. Michael stayed with one team, and you know, he did his thing. But LeBron's kind of like showed himself in in Miami, and not only there in Cleveland, but he got people or got people in tune to, to play the way they're supposed to. Uh, you remember back when he was started out with Cleveland, he was trying to get them on the same mentality to how to win because none of those guys um, knew how to win. And uh, for years, the Cleveland Cavaliers, as you can, as you know, were like, uh, like settling for second place every year. So he got them playing this year and, you know, he, he probably had his hand in a lot, and a lot of people didn't like that, but um, he had the tenacity like a Kobe Bryant. Like, this is how you got to play to win, and, and you had to sacrifice and dedicate a whole lot. And I think he, he showed that to a lot of guys on his team, particularly in this year. When you played with Michael Jordan in North Carolina, could you tell just how special he was? Did you know back then? Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to correct you on something. He played with me. <laughs> because I, I was there first. That's so, right. That's right. So uh, I'm just kidding, though. But what was <laughs> said that you know you couldn't really tell. You know, only only time that we had time to see each other was in practice when we went at when at, when at each other. Coach Smith uh, didn't really play us um, on that you know starting team uh, in practice, but we played against him. Playing against him, you know, he was a tough competitor and. Like everybody was in practice, we played hard for three hours. So um, you could tell, but you know you couldn't really tell until after he uh, left college, and you can see how he just blossomed. But in college, it's a whole different mentality. Like you know, tonight these guys coming out tonight, they they different after so many years in the league. You played uh, with the 95-96 Seattle Supersonics that lost to the Bulls in the NBA Finals. A lot was made about this year's Warriors team and a lot of talk about were these Warriors better than those Bulls. Can you put the discussion at rest? How good were those Bulls? Well, I don't know if I can put it to rest, but they were they were good too. I mean, they had a team almost similar to um, – to, to the Warriors in a sense where they had a, a depth on the bench, you know, a coach that just let them play. And um, even though they had two different philosophies, I think um, the Bulls probably, you know, they were bigger. You know, they, they could probably out, out man you in so many in, in different positions, like a Draymond versus Rodman or a Scotty versus a Clay. I mean, uh, the only thing that uh, Golden State didn't have is that they didn't play defense that well. And I think that's the edge of with the ball. They played defense, but I don't think uh, Golden State ever had that defense mentality because you have to actually you have to outscore them or keep them down. And I think that's what Cleveland did in those last couple of games. They, they got them out of their sets. And they didn't get that many points or fast breaks or three shots and things of that nature that 
get them to the 100, 110. And if you play an East Coast game with them, um, lock them down a little bit, um, that you saw what happened. Do you like the style of basketball that's being played across the NBA right now, specifically by the Warriors? Do you like the three-ball outside shooting game, or do you prefer it to be like when you played, a little tougher, a little more physical, a little more emphasis on the big man? Well, it could be a combination of both. I mean, the big man is kind of non-existent. You know, when you go small, he's sitting on the bench with you know with Gatorade. But I think that, um, you know, I'm sure it's just going to resurface. You know, they're going to go back to putting it inside. But it's just a matter of time. But I think right now it's a lot of one-on-one, uh, pick and roll. You know what they're going to end up doing. And you're going to either get a bad shot or an alley-oop or something like that. So, some guys don't really develop, and those guys who are coming out of college who shoot the jumper or turn around, hook shot or jump shot, it, it they have to learn how to play, you know, with their back. I mean, facing the basket instead of their uh, back towards the basket, and that's going to hurt some guys. But at the same time, everybody going to have to learn how to shoot the fifteen footer, twenty footer, and um, you see the game come outside a little bit. And it's going to be a guard game. It's a guard game now, so pick and roll and shoot and hope for the best. Sam Perkins with us, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Sam, I mentioned to you before the interview that I was a fan of yours when you played in Seattle, being a Seattle fan. My favorite non-Seattle athlete of all time is Allen Iverson. We talked about uh, Michael Jordan. We had talked about Kobe Bryant's competitiveness. As this is the year Allen Iverson is going into the Hall of Fame, I wanted to get your perspective. Just how tough a guy, how tough a competitor was he? Oh, man, he was tough. He was a, he was a different breed. He's like a player from a different claw. From on and off the court, you know, his, his swag, his demeanor. But he loved to play ball like everybody else. But um, I'm glad that he's going in and being acknowledged because of the fact he he had so many great years in Philly and then he, you know, kind of like felt his way around with different teams. But um, he, he was he was their, uh, their main guy. And he's played along with some greats that he said that taught him the game. But he was, his tenacity was just, he just loved to play. He was playing like he was in the street, playing a pickup all the time. And um, that's just the way he was. And I, you know, able to meet him and got a friendship with him. But I'm glad that he um, he's going in and being acknowledged as uh, one of the uh, all-time greats. Sam, tonight is the NBA draft. You were the f- uh, fourth overall pick in the 1984 draft by the Mavericks. What do you remember about draft night? Well, I wasn't really there because we were trying out for the Olympic team. Okay. And, uh, so uh, we didn't know where we were drafted. Bobby Knight had us in practice for a couple of hours, and he really didn't give give a you know a hoot about <laughs> uh, the 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 draft at the time. So we actually had to find out uh, when we went to a radio station where we were actually selected. So when the draft actually happened, some of us didn't know where we went. So uh, it's not till later. If you look back at the, some of the tapes, interviews, <laughs> they weren't interviewing nobody except for those guys who weren't at the Olympic trials. So, um, so I don't remember anything. I didn't go across no stage. I didn't get no hat. I got my hats when I got to the Mavericks and got to Dallas. And um, I remember holding out. That's the biggest thing where I was held, holding out for more money. I couldn't believe it. But um, that's that's those are the memories there. But it was a good feeling because you always wanted to play for the you know for the NBA team. And once the opportunity came, um, you know you take hold of it. And playing for the Olympic team as well, that just kind of personified just just to compliment it rather the uh, the aspect of getting drafted. Unbelievable as this is also an Olympic year this year. Sam Perkins with us, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Sam, we'll get you out of here on this. Shaker High School graduate, what are your fondest memories of the Capital Region, and what do you miss about upstate New York? Well, I go there all the time because my, my, my fam is still there. But uh, what I did miss is uh, my, my coach, who um, I'm not sure if you know him, uh, Julius Gamendo. I do not. And- Okay, he's my uh, he was my high school coach, and he was a warrior, but he was a competitor of a coach. But he did it the right way. But he never got to see me go to the pros. He actually passed away when I uh, went to North Carolina, so he never really experienced any of that. So, but he was my uh, he was my mentor at the time, and 
trying he he was like a laid back guy, but he was so worried about worried before games. But um that's how it was. I mean, I miss I miss I miss that team. Uh miss the guys. I think they still live up there in the capital district, but um just going there was just probably a blessing for me to to further whatever I did after that. And North Carolina noticed me from from high school. So I was appreciative for that and you know the rest four years at Carolina was probably the best thing that ever happened. And then, you know, getting the um that that certificate, that degree was probably the biggest thrill that, you know, before anything. Unbelievable story. Sam Perkins from right here in the Capital Region, Shaker High School product, nearly a 20-year NBA vet and Olympian, uh, has done so much in the game. Sam, we appreciate your perspective and your time. Thanks for being with us. All right, no problem.